everyone knows the carousel view because basically the home screen of your phone is a big carousel view. You can just scroll through it, you can scroll backwards and you will scroll through all of these pages and items. In this video, we're going to see how to implement the carousel view in your Xamarin Forms application. Here's our little sample app that we're going to look at today. You can see it here running on the iOS simulator. And I already implemented the carousel view here. So you can see a little monkey that is our, our going to be our sample data for today. And this is the carousel view. So you can scroll through that, uh, through this collection, you know, and you can use item templates so you can completely style however you want this to. I did a little attempt with some shadows and things, uh, but I'm no designer. Um, so but this, is, this is the thing that you're going to see as an entry Result. I got a little piece of feedback under one of my videos that it might be nice to see the end result before actually diving into it so you can easily more easily put the things together. So let me know if this is something that you've liked, then I can keep doing this or you know, if you just want to be surprised near the end of the video, um, and just start with code, let me know in the comments what you prefer. Um, but I'm trying this for this video at least. Now let's go over to Visual Studio for Mac. You can see here Visual Studio for Mac 2019. Uh, this is just the file new Xamarin Forms template that you get um, out of the box whenever you start a new app. And on the right, you can see the iOS simulator running. I didn't run the app just yet because we have a few things to take care of first. Um, also, I prepared a few things. I've already installed the Newtonsoft JSON NuGet package on the shared project so that I can deserialize some JSON. Um, also, in our code behind of the main page right here, I've implemented this monkey URL um, from James Montemagno. He has this prepared monkey JSON that he uses for all his test data. Um, he's been so kind to borrow that to me. So, you know, um, I think you can also go out there and use this URL whenever you need some kind of mock data for your app to test some things. So we're going to see a carousel view of a couple of monkeys right here. Um, and also the HTTP client that we're going to use to actually get the monkeys from this JSON file. So that's the things that I already prepared for you. Um, oh, and one more thing, I've already created also a monkey um, object right here. So this is the same object that we will get from the JSON with the same property so that it can be deserialized um, properly. So that's what I did. Um, now let me implement the rest of the code first. Uh, well, no, actually, let's just run this application first. And we can, um, you know, see with hot reload, see maybe some, some things already um, in action. Um, so let's wait for this to come up. And here we can see again, this is our page on the left in XAML on the right. This is what it looks like. So with hot reload, we can just start editing here. So I can say um, carousel view sample, save that and boom, it updates automatically in my simulator also works for physical devices also works for Android, of course. So that is really, really cool. Now, let me get rid of these labels right here. Uh, we're not going to use those. And what I'm going to do here is say I want to have a carousel view. Now, a carousel view is built on top of a collection view. It's just, you know, a different layout, basically, uh, specific to one use case. So a carousel view, um, is it has all the things of a collection view and more, of course. Um, so that's what we're going to see. Now, let's add the item source right here. So because again, it's, it's a collection view, so we can just bind this item source right here. I'm going to name this monkeys. Now, if you have no idea what I'm doing here, please check out the um, playlist that's popping up in your screen right now and in the video description. Or if you cannot figure out how to work with these bindings, let me know in the comments. Um, and maybe I'll make a video just for you on that topic. Um, so I'm going to do a little bit of data binding here. Um, I'll, I'll explain briefly while I'm doing this. Uh, so this is going to read from the monkeys collection right here. And then also in the carousel view is is a item template. So I can style each item. Here we go, item template. Now the IntelliSense is mixed up. There we go. And whenever I do this, and whoops, then we need to do a data template. I also got videos on the data template and such. Again, should pop up in your screen or in the video description. So go check that out. Um, and then I'm going to here do a um, frame. Let's do that. Well, no, actually, let's start with a stack layout. There we go. Um, let's do a frame. We're going to try and make it look pretty this time. 
Um, and we're going to say hash shadow because shadows is back. And um, let's also say the border color is dark gray. Here we go. And I'm going to give this a corner radius. So, you know, you, you're getting all the things of a, of a frame for free here. Uh, corner radius of five, a little margin of 20, um, height request 300 so that we, you know, we're not going to fill the whole screen. Um, horizontal options is going to be center and vertical options is going to be center and expand. There we go. So now we have a nice frame that we can work with. And inside of that frame, I'm going to use another stack layout. And first, I'm going to do a label, which is going to have the text again, I'm going to work with binding here. And now the scope changed. So I can say binding name. Um, and I can say font attributes is going to be bold and font uh, size is going to be large. Let's just go with large horizontal option center, um, vertical option center. There we go. And then underneath that, whoops, yes. Um, I'm just going to make it self close. There we go. Underneath that, I'm going to do the image and I'm just going to show the monkey because, you know, images are always nice. So again, binding, um, I think it's just called image. And um, let's make sure that this looks nice. So aspect is going to be aspect fill with a height request of 150 and a width request of 152. Um, horizontal options center so that it's all nice and centered. And there we go. So I'm not going to use the rest of the properties. Again, I'm just going to self close this I also always um, see think that that's more nice. Um, so now the carousel view is here. You see, there it is. Um, no, of course, because we don't have data. So um, let me implement a little bit of data first. And then let me go back to explaining a little bit about the um, data binding that's going on here too. So let's go to our um, code behind right here. And I already have the monkey URL and the HTTP client. So first, we're going to make a public observable collection observable collection. There we go. I'm going to click here on the IntelliSense thingy, little light bulb and say using system collection objects model because that's what's missing here. And then I'm going to say monkey because that is the thing that um, you know, I can deserialize. And then make sure that this is a property. Uh, oh, I need to give it a name. Monkeys, there we go. Make sure this is a property because if you want to work with data binding, it has to be a property. That is a pro tip. Um, I fell for this trap a couple of times already. So make sure it is one. And I'm just going to initialize it here. The new observable collection monkey, there we go. Because another thing that you want to do whenever you're working with data binding, you just initialize it once and then clear and add new items. Else, if you are going to reinitialize the observable collection, then you also need to reset your data binding or let your collection know that um, you know the whole collection has changed, else it will lose the connection and it won't update anymore. And also what you want to do is set the binding context, uh, binding context. Again, I will explain this in a little bit. Actually, let let me explain this right now. So I have an observable collection of monkeys now. Um, and I'm setting the binding context to this. So for our main page, um, the binding context is going to be the same object here. So everything that is in this class um, is something that we can data bind to. And we can just now say, hey, I want to do the monkeys. And whenever that's a property, then XAML knows to look inside of that binding context for the monkeys property, and it can work with that. Um, of course, typically, your binding context would be your view model object and not just the same page. But you know, for this example, this works fine. And then if we look at the example, so we can see here, if I say the item source, and I say binding monkeys, the um, carousel view automatically inherited the binding context of the content page. Um, you can also set the binding context of this thing um, if you want, but you know, typically you want it for the whole page. Um, and because we set that, it knows that binding monkeys um, it is the monkeys property inside of our main page right here. Now, the other interesting thing that's going on here is whenever we get into an item template, so that's this thing, this item template is going to be applied to one item in our observable collection. So whenever that happens, um, we suddenly have a change of binding scope. And whenever we do the binding name now, um, this name is going to be something inside of our monkey 
because now we're looking at one item in our observable collection and suddenly we have to do the name and the image and we can use all the properties here. Again, you can see it's all properties with getters and setters. Um, so suddenly our scope changes and whenever we go out of this item template, then we are back in our um, binding context again and, and um, that is everything that's in our main page. So I hope this makes it a little bit more clear. Now to get the actual monkeys, I need to write some async code. So I'm going to use the um, appearing for that for now because you know we can't do async things in the constructor. So I'm going to do it like this and I'm going to get the monkey JSON. Let me scroll that up for you a little bit. There we go. And I'm first going to get the JSON. So I'm going to say HTTP client dot get string async. And I'm going to use the monkey URL that I defined before. So now it's going out to this monkey URL JSON, the static JSON file from James. And he's going to download that. Well, um, at least whenever I say await here. So there we go. And then I'm going to deserialize that. So I'm going to say far uh, monkeys. So I'm now going to actually deserialize the actual monkeys. JSON convert dot deserialize object. Um, and I'm going to right click here, get the IntelliSense going using Newtonsoft JSON. It's going to add that in the top and then it knows this method and I can now say I'm going to deserialize this to a monkey and I want to use the monkey JSON. So it's going to download the JSON as a string with this bit and then from here it's going to deserialize all that JSON strings into actual objects that we can work with and now we're going to loop through it. So we're going to say for each uh, var monkey in monkeys uh, and there we go and we're going to add that to our bigger monkeys. So the naming could be better. <laughs> um, whoops, not add monkey. So it's going to, why is this not working? Local variable. Oh, right. Um, so this is funny. So can you spot the bug? Take a little second. Um, what I'm doing here, this is of course a um, um, collection of monkeys. So this has to be a array. So it's going to deserialize an array of all of these monkeys. So now I can loop through it. Um, and here I have the, the small monkeys. This is my local variable. And this is the, the big monkeys, my uh, observable collection right here. So I'm adding them to that. Of course, if this is some kind of reloading mechanism, you also want to clear your um, observable coll uh, collection monkeys uh, one first, but now it's just going to add them all to here. Um, so well, actually, actually, let's let's clear them anyway. Um, that, that might be better for the scenario that I have in mind right now. So there we go. It's going to clear it first, uh, especially if you do these things on appearing. It's very, you know, you probably shouldn't be doing that because now every time it appears, uh, all the monkeys gets added again and cleared again. So you probably want to have some other reload mechanism for this. Uh, but you know, it's it's sample code. Um, and I think I got all the monkeys. So let me actually stop and quickly rerun it again. And we should see our monkey show up now. And then the rest of the API in the collection view in the carousel view, I'm going to show you with um, hot reload. Okay, I missed a little thing somewhere. Uh, oh, there we go. Our binding name, I had to do this. And now let's run it again. You can see the IntelliSense also works for old examples. That's pretty cool. Now, when I we run the app again, we should see, there we go. We should see our little uh, thing coming up here. So that's cool. Actually, let's give it a little bit more body. Um, what did we have more in our monkey right here? Uh, we have the details, the details, there we go. So let's add the details here in our stack layout. Let's add a little label. Um, with another text that's going to be binding details. There we go. So I save that and it updates and well, that's interesting. <laughs> um, continue. I don't know why that is. Maybe it's just because this is loaded with hard reload. Um, so let's see if I run this again, if we can 
do this again. I think it has to do something with hot reload. See, there we go. Um, so now we can see that we have our monkeys and we can scroll through them. So this is our carousel view, which is really cool. Um, you can just scroll through them, scroll through them just like you're used to from a carousel view. And whenever you see you stop in the middle, it will scroll to, to the other one here. And this is all behavior that you can influence. You can say, hey, it needs to go back or forth, or I think you can make this more smooth too. And then from here you have a couple of interesting options. So the first thing that stands out is the loop. So we have this little loop property here, which is a simple Boolean loop, true or false. Um, and whenever it's set to true, it's true by default. You can notice that, um, you know, we can scroll through this and there's there's never an end. And if you look closely, then you can see that we're coming across the same monkeys, right? So whenever we go through the last item, then it will automatically loop through to the first one or the other way around. So if we go back to the first one, well, we can't go back to the first one because it's looping, um, then it, you know, it loops through uh, the other one. So whenever I now go to, uh, set loop is false and hopefully this doesn't crash again yeah i think it has to do with my little clear um, thingy so let me try this one um there we go let's see if this works better um, but then if we set loop to false then you can see that um, it doesn't loop anymore see so now we can't go um, through the first one or if i scroll down to the end right here you will notice that there is an end right so that's what the looping does so you can have this looping effect for some scenarios that's very useful for other scenarios it's not um, but that is something that you can definitely do so of course we also have events like with um, scrolling so you have the scrolled one um, or maybe um, items I think there's also with the item so because we're actually using the collection view you also have the remaining items threshold reach so whenever you you know reach a certain item you can maybe load more data and do your infinite loop or your looping thing there um, that is pretty cool too um, and I'm sure there's there's a lot of other stuff so let's have a look here at the events um, you can have the, the scrolled property changed, um, of course, that, that's there too. Position changed, so you can also get the position of the things that's shown right now. Um, you can also get that as a property. Um, it, of course, it just doesn't all just work with events, but also with commands. Uh, I think you can get the current item, the current item change. So there's a big number of events and commands and things that you can work with. Um, this is just to show you the basics. Go out and have a look at all the APIs yourself and create something awesome with this. Now, this is just to get started with the carousel view. Like I mentioned, there's a lot of more APIs to explore. So if you want to see something else about the carousel view, let me know in the comments and I'll be sure to make that video for you. Um, if you've liked this one, please click that like button, make the YouTube algorithm happy. I will pop up in more places, other people's feed and uh, more people can enjoy this. If you are new to this channel, hello, welcome. Please consider clicking that subscribe button, dinging that bell so you will be notified of new content automatically and I'll be seeing you for my next video. Keep coding.